Oh, we give you glory. We give you praise. Moselia Cambres Cuve Sasala Mantalico Beratua Minzo Seco Bresco Vetamin Turia Cabale Moseke. We ask, O oh God, that you take the right of way in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. And we ask that your tangible presence will be sustained throughout this time. And out of your presence, you will manifest your grace and activate your people to operate in their highest potential, even by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. Turn your Bible to the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers, chapter 11. We'll do a short reading. Then we'll take another scripture from the book of John. Then we'll begin our journey. We'll do a teaching for a few minutes, 25, 30 minutes. Then we'll go for practical. Do teaching, then we'll do the practical session. Hallelujah. Numbers 11 verse 24. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in the cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of one was Eldad. And the name of the other was Midad. And the spirit rested upon them. And they were of them that were written. But went not out unto the tabernacle. And they prophesied in the camp. And they ran a young man and told Moses. And said, Eldad and Midad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of Moses one of his young men answered and said my lord moses forbid them verse 29 is my emphasis and the exhortation i have today is i titled it the desire of moses you'll find that desire in verse 29 can we read 29 together as a congregation and moses said unto him envious thou for my sake would god that all the lord's people were prophets and that the Lord will put his spirit upon them when Moses came out with the children of Israel from the land of bondage in order for him to begin to establish a justice system he had to function in the capacity of the judge to hear the cases that the people brought to him and it was a very frustrating situation because from morning till evening, Moses will be judging cases. And his father-in-law decided to counsel him. And what his father-in-law recommended to him was this division of labor. And this work is so great, it will be needful for you to get some lieutenants, some functionaries that will stand with you in the execution of this task if not you will weary yourself and you also weary the people hallelujah now that, that seems like a wise counsel but it came to pass when god was addressing that issue the policy he approved was not division of labor the policy he approved was sonship and he recommended that seven people 
70 people be brought to the tabernacle and then he will show up in the cloud and take off the spirit that was upon Moses and put the same spirit upon the 70 elders it's not division of labor it's division of Moses the same spirit that was upon Moses was going to be functioning on 70 other people so if if one one guy is confronted with a case he will do what Moses would have done under the influence of the most the spirit that Moses carried so that was the policy that God implemented and it came to pass on the day of coronation that the Lord came as he promised that he would he would so do uh, but it came to pass that there were two men in the camp and when God came because there's no distance in the spirit uh, the two men also came under the impartation uh, that God was administering uh, uh, the problem are, are you with me uh, the, 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 the guys that were on ground felt there was a violation and someone came to bring a report to Moses to reveal to him how that there were two of the guys that missed the appointment but they are there in the camp prophesying. And Joshua, the son of Nun, who was one of the young men with Moses, now told Moses, stop them. You see, anytime there's a revival, God begins to do things that are not consistent with the expectations of men. You find that voice, that voice that came through Joshua, stop them. When something begins to take place, uh, that is not what we are used to. You know, when we flow with God many times, we put him in a box. And we say that God cannot function this way. God cannot function that way. God cannot do this. God, I've seen someone before, came for a meeting like this, wasn't born again, and he started speaking in tongues. So, at what point, hallelujah, at what point did salvation come to him? He just started speaking in tongues that day and then became a preacher the next week and he's still a preacher till today 16 years later didn't backslide and the reaction took place in such a way that you will even misjudge the experience hallelujah so that was what was about to happen and it afforded Moses to be able to speak his mind so we're able to peep into the heart that Moses had when it was as though the people that were asking him to stop the other ones from prophesying it was as if they were trying to bring some form of order they were trying to bring an administration to the move of god hallelujah anytime god begins something sovereignly you will need to find the code for the administration in the spirit not in the natural there is always a temptation for us to bring our learning in the area of administration into the administration of spiritual things just like they wanted to do but such an introduction has the capacity to kill that which is manifesting and moses now said if i were to speak on a day like this if if my opinion is needed at all i would Ask God to make all his people prophets. That he would not just be these 70 elders. If I was given room to suggest when the great monarch was issuing the commands and the instructions as to what he intends to do to reduce the burden, I would have asked him to make all his people prophets and that he will put what? His spirit upon them i hope you know the prophets in this context is not the office but a prophetic people that can operate by inspiration and tap into the frequency of the mind of god do you still remember what the bible says in the book of psalms because in the book of psalms the people of god were called prophets not because all of them functioned in the office they say touch not what my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm what god had in mind for which moses that had peeped into some of his secrets was that a day will come where every believer in the lord 
will become proficient in the use of the navigating system even the holy ghost such that um accuracy and precision will become the the the, the description of the quality of life that we live and it came to pass uh, Moses' desire registered in heaven and God fulfilled the desire of Moses in the New Testament economy he made provision for every believer to have a measure of the Spirit of God operational in his life I'd like us to pick a scripture quickly 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 I, I if you are still with me say amen, amen. John chapter 3 we see the fulfillment of the desire of Moses in the church and so it will be needful for us to understand the full import of the desire that Moses had which is already fulfilled in this dispensation so that we can live in the full capacity of that desire we can function adequately in the full implementation of the desire of Moses in the book of John chapter 3 please turn quickly turn quickly John chapter 3 beginning from verse 1 there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him rabbi we know that thou art a teacher come from God for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him Jesus answered and said unto him verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God the uh, John chapter 3 begins on a very thunderous note the uh, there's a robust introduction uh, that we see in the book of John chapter 3 because uh, the Bible says there was a man Nicodemus could be considered first of all he's a man hallelujah secondly he's a Pharisee thirdly he's a Jew fourthly he's a ruler fifthly is Nicodemus so we can consider him are you <laughs> we can consider him on five levels are you with me that's too much introduction it's too boisterous but according to Jesus it, okay this guy his CV is large but you see when Jesus was addressing Nicodemus there was only one way Jesus could address him are you with me Je Jesus addressed Nicodemus the man not Nicodemus the Pharisee not Nicodemus you understand where I'm going and then Jesus makes a strange statement he said except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God mm. you know what Jesus meant you were not born where And as long <laughs> as as long as you have this defect, you are totally cut off from a civilization. This civilization is responsible for the cause of things upon the face of the earth. <laughs> this civilization is what will determine how this age ends. And you are cut off from that whole island just because you have a challenge with the way you were born that's what jesus said now so this man being an intellectual probably studied in oxford in harvard he now wanted to make jesus explain what he meant and he, he said well what are you talking about is it that i should go back into my mother's womb and be born because the only kind of birth process that Nicodemus knew was that which will come by a woman and uh, Jesus said unfortunately even if you succeed in getting back to your mother's womb and you are born you will still be flesh <laughs> for that which is what 
born of flesh is flesh. But what we are talking about here is a bet that comes by the spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, it was in John chapter 3 that Jesus himself attempted to define what it means to be born again. He didn't, instead of defining it, he gave us an illustration of it. But I will not stumble upon that. Uh, it's, it's not within the scope of this lecture. Hallelujah. My emphasis is on the word see. Except a man be born again, he cannot what? See the kingdom of God. The vast island, the vast possibilities of the kingdom of God is not accessible until a man becomes born again. And the organic implication of being born again is that your spirit is enliving, your spirit is regenerated and the Holy Spirit begins to tabernacle your spirit. It gives your spirit life. The implication of this organic reality is first of all, uh, you will now have the capacity through the spirit that tabernacles you to be able to perceive the word see there. Are you with me? The word see there means to perceive by the use of senses. And so when the Holy Ghost came upon your heart, he activated your receptacle. I will explain what I mean by that. I hope you know when you were in your mother's womb and you were nine months old in your mother's womb, you had developed eyes. Is that true? Your ears were developed. Your lungs developed. Your feet developed. But, unfortunately, those parts of your body were not designed for the womb. You will have to be born first before your eyes become relevant. Is that true? You will have to be born first before your ears become relevant. So Jesus is saying you will need to be born first spiritually before your receptacle which is the organ that contains your four spiritual senses will now be activated for function. The organic proof that you are born again is that your receptacle is active. That's what Jesus said. Are you, are you, we are in the school of prophets. This evening is a school, the school of prophets. Because the desire of Moses must be fulfilled to the letter. I wish that all the Lord's children were prophets. And that what? He will put his spirit upon them. Let us examine your receptacle. The organ with four senses. First spiritual sense. John chapter 13 verse 1 to 3. Now, if the media man can help me, oh my God, God bless the media man. Anywhere you are, you are blessed. First spiritual sense. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. First thing to underline. Please go back, please. Underline knew. Jesus did what? Knew. All right, go on. That his hour had come that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. And Jesus, knowing, underline that, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God. There are three knowings here. Jesus knowing, number one, the Father has given all things into his hands. Jesus knowing that he was come from God. Number three, Jesus knowing that he went to God. First spiritual sense is called the knowing of revelation. Is that knowing that you know that you don't know how you know, but you yet know? It's a revelation. The knowing of revelation. This is the strongest sense on your receptacle. 
70 percent of the communications of god oh, oh, oh you are not with me you are not with me you are not with me now listen to me listen carefully L listen carefully I, I can't repeat myself we are not talking about the gifts of the spirit too. we are talking about we are not saying do you have the gift of the spirit no we are saying do you have the spirit if you have the spirit this is your portion i wish that all the lord's children were prophets and that he would put what he didn't say gift of the you put his so understand that please help me preach to your neighbor quickly we are not talking about the gift of the spirit we are talking about the presence of the spirit the knowing of revelation is your first spiritual sense 70 percent of god's dealings will come through that platform it is it is are you with me it's a no it's part of what we call god's non-cognitive communication and if you are going to be an accurate prophet you must perfect the non-cognitive communication first before you can now walk in the cognitive communication you must know how god communicates to you and leaves your mind at home and you can follow with your heart until your heart becomes the organ that is ahead of your thinking your mind that's what makes a spiritual man there's a shift that will take place that will put god's operation in your heart ahead of your mind so when you have heard God that you cannot strategize. Don't start strategizing anything if you have not heard God. That which is born of what? The flesh is. You remember that? Do you know that many times the difference between life and death is a knowing? You need to know when to sit, when to stand, when to walk away and when to run. You need to know when to board a flight and when to allow the flight to go. Even though you have a valid ticket on business class. The knowing of revelation. Many times my life has been spared just by a knowing. And it's something that you can readily despise. Because it's not a knowing that is, 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 is apprehensive. It's a quiet knowing. Uh, <laughs> It's a very quiet knowing and then you will now find out that the streams of the spirit many times they are on their own quiet cool mode powerful things powerful signs in the spirit you still remember that elijah's prayer on on camel the effect of the prayer was appearing in the canvas of the sky and when the servant came the seventh time he saw an insignificant cloud that looked like the hand of a man so insignificant something you can despise <laughs> But Elijah said, that is the sign that proves that what? There is going to be an abundance of rain. Something very big in physical manifestation will appear in the spirit like a feather. And if you don't understand the language of the spirit, you will despise it. He said, the things of the kingdom look weak. But they are, that's how power administers its protocol. I tell you today, uh, your, your, your spirit, your senses will come alive in the name of Jesus. Many times when you are going through persecution, you will not even understand what is happening without a knowing. If you know, or like for Paul in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, I guess verse 12, is it 1 verse 12 or 2 verse 12? He said, because of these things I have suffered many afflictions but i know i what i know whom i believed so his suffering could not bend his mind the devil is in the business of mind bending to bring you to a point where you disbelieve the things you believe just because there's a little pressure you you can disbelieve if there's no knowing but a man that knows is so terrible so difficult for the devil to deal with because when you give him nine thirty nine stripes strokes of the cane he will say behold i make all things new knowing of revelation please help me ask your neighbor what do you know number two john chapter five john chapter five from verse 20 21 quickly quickly number two i don't have time i don't have time this is jesus speaking 20 john 5 20 let's begin from 20 please media man for the father loveth the son and showed him 
all things that himself doeth. Can you underline show it? Show it. And this showing is a manifestation of what? Of the Father's love. So we call this sense the sight of affection. First is the knowing of revelation. Second is what? The sight of affection. Uh, 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 next verse, quickly. Next verse, quickly. And he will show him greater works than these that he may marvel. Underline show. Have you read the scripture that says, Call unto me, and I will answer you? Uh, so it means that what I just want you to do is to call. I will give you the answer for which you call. But in addition to that, I will do something that you did not ask for. I will, I will show you. I will show you. Great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Oh my God. You, you know, mm, God will help us. I, I'm constrained. I'm constrained. It, it, the, the power of God came upon my wife one day and from the standing position to the floor, she saw a vision. When you fall today, see something before you get down. In the name of, don't just, don't, no, no. See, <laughs> See something. See something. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. That vision she saw in just a few seconds is, is the definition of her life today. Yes, it's a call. I will answer. I will give you your prayer point. I'll give you your prayer request. But when your spirit has gained ascendancy and you have arrived at a, an energy level for, for sight, that's why I'm I allow some affliction so that you can call. V visions will not come to you uh, on, 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 on plain level. You need to gain ascendancy. There's an energy level where visions are possible. So I'll allow an affliction to put pressure on you so that you can call. The moment you call and I see you reach that point, I will answer. Remove the affliction. And then I will now show you. He will show you today in the name of Jesus. So that's what we call the sight of 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 what of affection. Uh, it, oh my God! The Lord, the Lord will help us. I was denied a visa one day, and I forgot about it. And when I applied again, I made an obvious mistake. Oh, came back heartbroken. Hallelujah. And it came to pass while I slept. I beheld the man come into my room. And he said, I came to give you your visa. I thought it was real. Then I woke up. My wife woke me. And I did not speak for a long time. What is this? With this mistake, it's called great and mighty things. Great, great. It will beat your imagination. It will flaw your thinking pattern. It will go beyond your expectation. A major flaw, but it didn't count. And after I saw that vision, I knew I had it. And so it was. Some things you think you have missed, you will see it again. <laughs> ah. I think I will stop on number three. I can't do number four because of time. Uh, Acts chapter 10 verse 9 you know this one Acts 10 9 on the morrow as they went on their journey they drew nigh unto the city Peter went up upon the house up to pray about the sixth hour and he became hungry and would have eaten but while they made ready he fell into a trance you see, when you have video without audio, many times the video has no meaning. Try to watch your screen without audio. Just shut it down. And somebody will be doing like, like, like this. And you will not be able to interpret. It will be a mystery. Huh? So you, even though you have video, you need what? You need audio. And he saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as he had been a great sheet neat at the four corners and let down to the earth wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air 
And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter. You, you know this one. It's the hearing of it. Rise, Peter. It's not because there was a voice that was audible to your ears. The voice was only audible to the ear of your spirit. And I say ear, not plural. Singular. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus said, He that has ears, let him hear. And he was speaking about the fact that John the Baptist was Elijah to come. He was talking to, it was his physical communication. But when he went to the book of Revelation, the same Jesus. Now say, he that has an ear in the book of Revelation, let him what? So this is not plural. It is your spiritual ear is singular. He that has what? Let him. So the Bible says that the seeing eye and the hearing ear is the Lord that gives them both. Just in case. So I'm going to stop here. You do the study of the last one. So that we can do practical. Hallelujah. In the school of prophets, after instruction, there is supposed to be an accompanying practical so that you will have confidence in on the move of God on your own life. Mm, that's what it's about. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, you, God has been moving on your life, but you are not sure. So that's the reason for the practical. Are you with me? Yes, sir. I say, are you with me? Yes, sir. The seeing eye and the hearing ear, it is the Lord that gives them both. So you can ask for a seeing eye. You can ask for a hearing ear and the Lord will give them. I, I never knew how easy it was to prosper on, until I started hearing God. Then the scripture that says the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now began to make meaning to me. Just by a word from God, just a directive from God can settle your financial challenges forever. Yeah, forever. And so if we want to teach people to prosper, my own aspect of that lecture is to teach you how to hear. The technocrat can come and teach you skills. Me, I will teach you hearing. Hallelujah. If you can hear well, you can do something that the technocrat says you should not do and it will work. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So in the school of prophets, what we do, and which we are going to do now, if you want to hear God, the easiest way to activate his hearing is by speaking in tongues. Now, see, that's, that's not all. As you speak in tongues, set your heart. You have the authority to exercise your will in that regard. Set your heart on the Lord, not on, your, on the house rent. <laughs> not what your manager said today that is troubling you now. Can you forget about your manager? And just, you can do that with your will. Set it on the Lord. Can we try? All right, so for the next... 10 minutes is practical. What did I say? You speak in tongues. And then you set your heart on the Lord. That's easy. You speak in tongues and then you put your heart on the Lord. Not on any other thing. Just on what? On the Lord. Then as we begin to do it, heaven will open. When heaven opens, then we begin to run commentaries. The spiritual senses will begin to operate. Then you will understand what I'm saying during the practical. Can we, can, we, can we focus on the Lord? Just focus on him. Focus on Jesus as you pray in tongues. Focus on Jesus. Just focus on Jesus. Nothing else. Take everything else out of your heart. And just focus on Jesus. Just focus. I wish that all the Lord's children were prophets. And that he will put his spirit upon them. Just focus. Make sure you are praying in tongues. And then you focus. Focus on Jesus. Don't focus on anything else. Oh my. Don't focus on anything. Take any care out of your heart. Let the Lord alone 
be magnified be magnified therein Mebronda suke kebes kofra masi konte malakuria bremina suka bela taita. All right. In the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. I don't know about you, but the receptacle is functioning already. It takes five minutes. If you are a prayerful person and you pray one hour a day, it takes five minutes for you to enter into the hearing zone. Five minutes of prayer. Five minutes. You see, your prayer of inquiry sits on the foundation of the prayer of charging. That's what we call prayer of charging. Your spiritual batteries require like one hour minimum for charging. And if you fought with your wife, it will take one hour, 45 minutes for charging. You fought with her in the night. The charging time will be prolonged because you have to go into repentance and, and probably go back to where she is and wake her up. At. All of that is part of the charging. So when you are charged, that one hour, one hour, 45 minutes charge will take you through the day. Subsequent praying in tongues will take you to the hearing zone. Yes. Yes. 